Well, here we are. Uh, another Twin Turbo Tuesday update. Is that the name you gave Twin it? Twin Turbo Tuesday. There we go. Um, so we've pulled this Range Rover in from round the back. Uh, this is one we bought in for core material for the engine. So this engine eventually will end up being stripped down and uh, shelved until somebody wants a 4.6 and this ends up being that core material. So obviously we've got a fair, fair bit on the um, shelves because we're constantly buying engines in. However, um, from our last little uh, video we popped up, uh, or the photos I think, of the turbo returns. People are saying, oh, why are both returns on one side of the sun? Well, for a few reasons. One, there's not much distance down here to get the pipes around the starter and then into the sump. Secondly, <coughs> when you uh, weigh up the options of twin turboing one of these engines in this engine bay, there um, is very little space this side for all the pipe work and everything. So if this turbo was mounted this way round, um, granted we could clock this so the outlet is pointing that way and then take pipe work, mm, no it can't go over there. Uh, we could bend it this way and then come forward and then run past the radiators come out of this so this is actually all consumed space uh, that doesn't really work could clock it over so it points this way and put a gems plenum on here and then run the pipework around the back of it that would work but don't really want to uh, trying to do this as something that people can install and almost purchase as a kit really and changing a plenum and an inlet manifold it's a lot of work um, although obviously injectors are going to need to be discussed later. So, um, there's not really enough space this side, however... It doesn't help that on your car someone put an LPG vaporizer there too. Yeah, uh, that can always move, that can always move. There is lots of space this side. Now, granted we've removed the air suspension valve block and box. Um, it's not really an issue, my car's on coil springs, not everybody's are. Uh, however, the valve block is just very small pipework and a few wires that could be reloca relocated in many other places. Uh, I mean, the pump doesn't necessarily need to be next to the valve block or anything like that. So that, that can be moved quite easily. Obviously, the airbox is going because I'm not going to run a conventional airbox. We're going to run twin filters on this. So the idea is run a link pipe from the right bank to the left bank, which has its own issues. Um, but they are, can be overcome, and then mount turbo A somewhere in this area and turbo B somewhere in this area. Um, that's the, I would say master plan, but that means it's set in stone. That's the current plan, open to adaptation. Um, this evening I'm going to hang around and make some bracketry up to actually mount these turbos roughly where I know they need to be. Got to allow room for the inlet pipe here as well. Still yet to determine if I'm going to go into cooler or charge cooler. Um, I'm actually swinging towards charge cooler because there's very little room in front of all the radiators here, especially for pipe work, because uh, I am retaining air conditioning. Um, so let's see what this evening and the weekend brings, and then we'll do another video because today's actually Thursday, it's not. No, it isn't. Not. It's Friday. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yes. So this video will go out on Tuesday and hopefully I'll have a little bit more of an idea and I'll have also ordered all the pipe work I need to make up the manifolds, etc. Um, we'll just pop the car up in the air, I think, quickly to see what's going to go on underneath with a link pipe. Well, before we look underneath, um, today is another day. It uh, is actually Tuesday today and uh, I did stay behind and do some work over the weekend as well and this is, I think, the final mounting position for the turbos. So, um, someone did comment, as, uh, could I put the turbos on the bottom of the um, manifolds as well um, on some private pictures I put up on Facebook and when we look underneath we'll see why I don't think that's a possibility either. And also someone commented about the battery box but again with pipe work to and from it for the exhaust Again, there's just a lot going on there, and then you've got to find somewhere for a big battery, um, which I don't really want to have to relocate and take up spoo 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 space. Boot space. That's what that is. So, uh, with a little bit of bracketry and on this uh, perfect mount that Land Rover supplied for bolting turbos to for positioning, also known as a uh, shock absorber mount. Um, that is where I think they're going to fit. So this turbo will be fed with exhaust gases from the driver's side bank and this one from the passenger side bank. Um, 
Very difficult to actually get enough space in here. This turbo, I can't push further forwards because the uh, manifold to it uh, would then hit the suspension mount. And I can't push it that way anymore because the downpipe needs clearance to the rocker cover and the HT leads. Obviously the HT leads can be uh, heat shielded. Uh, we've got some nice heat shield socks for those actually. And downpipe can be wrapped or ceramically coated. Um, so that's a nice setup there. Obviously it looks nice and symmetrical as well. Um, this ECU is close to here, but again, I've got a plan that could actually, uh, this box could be trimmed and pushed back a bit, or the ECU could actually be mounted up the other way up inside of it potentially, which would then lower everything, and again, a heat shield between them. So that's less of a concern for me at the moment. Um, the plan here is then I've got lots of space for a charge cooler. So whether I run a charge cooler through the standard heater system, oh, sorry, cooling system of the engine, or whether it runs a separate cooling system, I'm going towards a separate cooling system at the moment, just to bring those in that temps down even further. Um, but I think now what we should do is uh, go underneath. Uh, oh, obviously there is one other thing, this turbo is now missing, which is the um, actuator. So I've clocked the uh, compressor housing on this so that the outlet's pointing this way can then meet up with the uh, outlet on the rear turbo and join in for a nice charge cooler here. That does mean the uh, actuator has had to be removed. Obviously it doesn't just bolt on the wrong side of the turbo, so I'm gonna have to trim this and fabricate a bracket to bolt on the back of the housing. Again, uh, shouldn't be too tricky. Um, just gotta get it right so the pretension is good on it. Otherwise it won't open the wastegate properly. Then we can end up with overboost. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. So uh, let's pop this up in the air and have a look at the underneath bits. Right, so um, the possibility of mounting a turbo here. There is a, a reasonable amount of space here. Um, I do off-road my P38 though, and I don't really want to be dragging actuators and things through the mud. Um, however, um, technically I've got the Discovery for off-roading and the P38 just for green laning and towing and things. So yeah, I could mount it here. Uh, there is quite a bit of space. This side, obviously there is less because we've got a prop shaft. So you wouldn't be able to mount it there. And then you get into a very unsymmetrical look under the bonnet, which I don't like, I'm not a fan of. Turbos mounted side by side is a nice look, but, and either side of the engine where you can see them is a nice look, but one underneath, one on top. There. The biggest thing here though is it's lower than the sump, which um, I have seen um, through a YouTube channel that we follow, Steve, don't we? Um, Skid Factory. Yep. Yeah. Um, turbo, uh, turbo Yoda, is that his name yet? Uh, Al did a sump on the actual turbo uh, and then a scavenge pump to pump the oil back in. Um, I don't particularly want to go down that route again because I can't mount them both down here. So. I'm happy with mounting them both up this side of the engine. Now the link pipe, um, we can't go through the sump, the bell housing, the torque converter, any of that. Um, we can't really go in front of the gearbox sump because we've got the gearbox cooler pipe in the way there. Um, and obviously we've got the prop shaft that, sorry that's not prop shaft, that's a dry, it says prop shaft that goes up uh, on suspension travel, which means we'd have to go all the way back to behind the cross member where the original crossover pipe goes and then forwards again. However, with one pipe traveling forwards to supply exhaust gases to a turbo, that takes up a lot of space where we need the down pipe to take gases away from both turbos back towards the back of the car because we're not doing front exit side pipes before you, you say that now. Steve. You say that now. Yeah, so that's not an option. Um, however, there's lots of space up here on the front of the sump. Well, that was my first thought, and then I looked at the bump stop. Granted, this one is, uh, has seen better days. However, when this axle goes up and meets the bump stop, there is no space right here in line in front of the big um, oil pan. So the plan is to you reuse the original driver's manifold, but to reorientate the exit flange on it. To then bring the exhaust pipe forwards, obviously with heat shields where needed, to the side of this uh, engine mount, the starter wiring obviously can be relocated over the top of it. If it's not long enough, it can be lengthened. That's just a couple of wires. It's no biggie. 
Um, so along here, above this level that my hand's at now, so that it uh, misses the axle should it meet the bump stop. Forward to a nice tight 90, under the very front of the engine, in front of the axle line. So really above the um, panard rod line, which uh, should be clearance for. And then directly up to the turbo, which Steve, if you walk forwards and don't hit your head, you can come round and well, you might be able to I see, can see it from, from here. here like. Okay, right. So the front turbo then is lined up perfectly for a, what I'm calling an up pipe from that line. So that's the current plan. Um, my shed 10 stainless steel pipe has just turned up for the beginnings of making the passenger side manifold. So that's uh, tonight sorted. Um, I think that'll do for now. Would have been easier to buy an RB.